Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Devin with Haas Auto West and we're going to begin the process today of taking the transmission out of this 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokee and rebuilding it. This Grand Cherokee has the straight 6 4.0 liter engine and it has the 4.2 RE version of the transmission. So that's the transmission you have then we're going to be talking about what you need to do to get the transmission out of the vehicle to get it rebuilt and then to put it back in the vehicle our very first step is going to be to remove the negative battery terminal in this case we have a quick removal device just a little battery switch so I turn that off and then our second step is going to be to take a pump and a container so I've got a pump like this one that's got some leads on it and then I've got um, just a container here. This was an aloe vera container. And we're going to drain as much of the fluid out of the transmission as we can through the dipstick tube. So this will just help us when we get down there to actually have to take the transmission out. It's going to weigh less. Or if we end up dropping the pan before, whenever we take the pan off, it's going to have a lot less fluid in it to come out and fall all over the place. And usually you can get most of the fluid out with this to the point that the pan won't overflow when you take it off. So this is a good idea. I'm going to reposition the camera so that you guys can see a little better what I'm doing and we'll continue that. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and remove the transmission dipstick all the way at the back of the engine on the driver's side and we can just put that aside to get it out of our way then you want to figure out which end of your pump is the suction end in this particular pump it's the end connected to the top and then take the suction end tube and put it down the dipstick you usually need to put it most of the way in there and you'll feel it stop once it gets to the transmission pan and you can just put that to one side. Then take the other end of your tube and put it into whatever your container is to catch your fluid. And try and set it somewhere that the tube's not going to pop out of the container and that, that you're going to be able to move the fluid. Alright, so then begin pumping. As long as the pump is submerged on one end in the fluid, you should see the transmission fluid start to fill in your container. And you just want to apply steady, even pressure to the pump. And hopefully neither of these hoses is going to pop loose. It's usually what will go wrong if anything will go wrong. You can reset the bottom a couple times. You may get more or less fluid out using this method depending on if your transmission is low on fluid or if it's all the way full. The reason we're rebuilding this transmission is because the front seal has failed. Sometimes when the front seal has failed you may have a leak. So while I'm getting fluid, I'm not getting quite as much out as I would normally. But it is gradually coming up. Sometimes you can stop for a minute and let it drain a little bit more. The torque converter is draining fluid. Sometimes the transmission cooler in the front with the radiator is draining fluid. So you've made some space in there and gradually some transmission fluid is going to leak back down into that space. You can always move the tube around a little bit and make sure you're actually at the bottom. Make sure it's in the pan. And then just after a minute or so, go ahead and try again. I'm getting a little more suction now. And you just want to do this until you feel like all you're moving is air. Right now it pretty much feels like I'm moving air. Alright, and then take the end that you had in the transmission and be careful it's going to leak some fluid. Try and lift it up quickly. 
Go ahead and put the other end in the container. And you're going to want to elevate the pump above the container and pump out whatever last little bit you have into the container without spilling it. All right, so that should make our transmission lighter when we go to remove it. Okay, so after removing the fluid and after disconnecting the battery, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the propeller shaft at the rear differential. So I've got an 8 millimeter wrench. I'm using my small drive wrench in this case. Um, and we're going to go into the vehicle. We only have one propeller shaft because this is the two-wheel drive version of this Jeep. So it should be a little simpler than when we have two propeller shafts. Okay, so we are at the rear differential right now, and you can see there is a strap bolt, or a little strap of metal with two bolts on either side. And then on the actual transmission, we just have the slip yoke. So our first move is going to be to remove both of these, and then both of those over on that side. I did forget to mention that the Jeep is up rather high on jack stands right now. I have four of them holding the Jeep in position. It's something you definitely want to do before beginning this project because we're going to need a lot of room to get the transmission out from underneath the vehicle. Here's my cat. What you doing? Okay, so vehicle's in gear right now, which should make it a little bit easier. And I'm going to take these off together and try to keep them together so that I don't get the two straps mixed up. Okay, again, I'm going to take the whole strap off with the bolts and attempt to keep it so that I know which way it was installed on the vehicle. I can install it the same way. Okay, next I'm going to take a small pry bar and put it behind the U-joint and put some pressure on the whole thing forward. It should come out without too much trouble. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a roll of masking tape and put it around these end caps before they come off because it can be difficult to get back on and we don't really want to lose any of the needle bearings. So we're just going to tape these in place. It's enough to hold them on there. All right, now the entire U-joint can just move towards the rear of the vehicle, put a hand on either side, and as long as the slip joint's not stuck, it should come off. We can just set that aside. You may have a little fluid start draining out of the transmission when you remove it. So you can see I've got a little bit of drainage here. Once I've removed the drive shaft, be sure you're ready to catch that with a pan. It may keep dripping for quite a while, so you do want to put something under it. Here's what the slip yoke itself looks like. Before we go to reinstall this, we're going to want to grease the inside and outside of it. Fits onto the output gear on the back of the transmission. And usually it will also drip quite a bit of fluid when you first take it off, so just try to be ready for that. So here's our drive shaft removed. All right, folks, so we uh, are working on the two-wheel drive version of the Jeep, but I thought just in case you have the four-wheel drive version of the Jeep that I would take the dealer service manual section on removing the transmission and just read you really quick the steps that you need to take to remove the transfer case if you are working on the four-wheel drive version of the vehicle. Okay, so once we disconnect both propeller shafts or the propeller shaft 
in your case it'll be both if you're the four-wheel drive version and it says disconnect vehicle spen speed sensor wires disconnect vacuum vent hose at transfer case disconnect transfer case shift linkage at range lever then remove linkage bracket bolts and remove linkage and bracket from transfer case move linkage aside for clearance remove nuts attaching transfer case to overdrive unit gear case remove transfer case Support transfer case with transmission jack. Secure transfer case to jack with safety chains. Then move transfer case rearward and off of the transmission. Remove transfer case from transmission jack and place the transfer case on the bench. I also have a video that I've already done of me removing the NP249 transfer case from a 94 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's very similar from this Jeep. So if you want to go find that video in my playlist, it will also show you more of the details of how to remove the transfer case from the vehicle. Okay, so moving on, we need to focus on disconnecting the vehicle speed sensor wires and the other sensors on the transmission. So I'm going to go back under the vehicle and show you where those are. Okay, so here we are on the rear of the vehicle, well, on the rear of the transmission. We're on the driver's side right now and this connector right here is the one for the speed control sensor we want to pull up on the tab just slightly and wiggle back on the whole thing try to be gentle with it we don't want to break the tab off and while i'm here if we follow this same connector you can see that the park neutral safety switch is right here you just want to wiggle the park neutral safety switch connector. Gently pull back on it until it pops off. There's usually a third connector up here. Let's see if this is the one. Yeah, there's a third connector. Let me get some light so that we can see where it is. And you can see that connector up in there it's usually got actually a button on either side that needs to be squished in before it'll release so you got to work around transmission wires you gently squeeze on either side of this button it will also break if you're not careful Let's see if you can work it up Okay, so it's got two of those same style of clips on it, one on either side that snap into place to hold it on there. So you need to gently pry back on these with a pick or a similar device, either that or use two hands to pull up on it while you push this tab and then push the tab on the other side. When it's all the way installed, it clicks into place. So let's see, I'm going to be careful. attempt to pull it off of there. Like I said, you want to be really delicate with these connectors. Okay, so that's how it comes off. You actually do push down on both sides of it at once, pushing down on the two different connectors. One right here, one on the other side, and then just pull up on it. Shouldn't take a lot of force, it should come right off of there. Okay, so that's three out of the four connectors that we have to remove. We have one other small one right here. And it clips on and needs to be pulled off like so. Alright, so that's all four of the connectors on the transmission, electricity wise and we're just going to have to take the entire wiring harness and move it out of our way towards the passenger side of the vehicle and just hope that we don't catch it or damage it in the process of removing the transmission. 
All right, I'm over here on the passenger side of the vehicle now. You can see the wiring loom, it keeps extending down to one of the O2 sensors. So I've just taken the ends of all of the four transmission electrical connectors for the sensors and put them behind it. That should keep it out of our way. While we're working on it, you can see that the loom splits right there and continues on towards the engine bay. There is a little clip holding it in place right there. We're going to be wanting to remove that clip at some point, but we can wait a little while to do that. Alrighty, so we are here underneath the vehicle on the driver's side. You can see the linkage there right nearest to us. And then past the linkage up there, that is the crank position sensor. There's an 11 millimeter bolt, so we need to take that 11 millimeter bolt out and pull the crank position sensor. So I'm just going to get in there with a small socket wrench and extension. And of course I'm working around the vehicle linkage. Alright, so we're just going to take the wrench and gently remove the bolt from the crank position sensor. Didn't take very much force. Hey Bendy, what's going on? Alright, now that we have removed the bolt, crank position sensor, we come up and out of the transmission bell housing. So we're just going to get our hand in there. push up on it, rock it back and forth until it comes out. You can see I've removed it now and that's the crank position sensor. Now I'm going to take it and pull it up towards the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay, so like I said a second ago, we're gonna come up here to the passenger side of the vehicle and making sure we've already got it on the other side of the dipstick. I'm just gonna pull this wire here and we get the, the crank position sensor. I'm just gonna set it aside to make sure it can't get crushed. We go to reinstall the transmission later. All right, now that the crank position sensor removed up there, we're going to take a look at the kick down linkage. Now, the dealer service manual says basically to drop the cross member first and have this on the transmission jack before you start to mess with the linkage. But I find it a little bit easier to get it out of my way before I have to get around the transmission jack. So if you look up here, you'll see that there's a small nut that attaches the kick down linkage, which is on top of the regular linkage. That nut is 11 millimeters or possibly 5 16 Either one will probably work. And it attaches this top kick down lever. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reach up here and we're gonna disconnect this spring. This spring holds the kick down in place. You can sometimes use a pair of pliers but either way you want to do it, you want to get the spring and pop it off of the two holes that it's on. Sometimes a little easier said than done. And you'll see that the longer part of the spring connects to this part right here. I'm just going to take this spring off and we're just going to set it aside. That holds our kick down in place. And then now you'll notice the kick down moves back and forth. There's a small plastic connector on the top of the kick down, which goes to a knob. What you want to do is you want to take this and just push straight up on it until that knob pops out. You might feel like you're going to break it. This part of it actually just pulls off of the back here, which you can create a little bit of uh, movement in it so it's not so stiff. 
and we just want to pop it straight up like that. All right, so now the kick down lever should wiggle back and forth freely. Now well, we're just going to get in there with an 11 millimeter wrench and we're going to loosen it up about three or four turns, maybe not even that, just enough that it comes off the small piece of D-shaped metal that it's stuck onto. You should always remove the top kick down lever before you remove the lever that holds the regular linkage in place. Sometimes it can be difficult to get the wrench on there, especially when you're trying to film it. Let's see if I All right, so once you get that on there, along with the wrench, just need to take a few turns on it. So just enough to loosen it up. And once it's loose, Okay, so once you've loosened it up enough, you should be able to grab a hold of the kick down lever and just wiggle up on it. It may be pinched in place if that was ever over tightened. If you can't get it off, you may need to wedge a small screwdriver underneath it to get it off. In this case, I might have to do that. All right, yeah, so the kick down lever is loose, but it's not being super cooperative. So I'm gonna have to get in there with either a screwdriver or a little bit of a pry bar, get underneath it and put some pressure under it. Just wanna pry it away from the other piece of linkage below it. And hopefully not damage it in the process because the two of them are attached not to the same part of the same shaft, but to a similar part. And you can see it's moved up slightly there because it works sort of like a wedge. And I'm gonna get underneath it. So I get it to come off of that shaft. up on that. Now we should be able to go ahead and grab it with our hand and wiggle it off that last bit. Probably got a little bit over tightened last time. It'd be quite that hard to take off. Okay, so that's most of the kick down linkage. You can see the part that we just pulled off right there. It's going to need to go back on the same way. You can see the hole in it is shaped sort of like a D. It really only goes on one way. Now we have the remainder of the linkage, which is attached rear of the transmission right here. So I have a 9/16 socket, which fits onto this bolt. And just go ahead and grab my wrench. So this back piece that holds the linkage in place just has this bolt in it that goes into a piece of metal. I'm going to grab our ratchet and a small extension. And I said it's a 9 16th socket. Might be able to get a 17 to work. And we're just gonna take this bolt out really quick. And you may need to hold the part it's screwing into a little bit just to get it to come undone. If the kick down linkage on the other end is connected to the throttle body 
and um, this piece of metal here holds it onto the transmission so I'm gonna thread it around my transmission cooler line so I'm gonna put this bolt back in place just so it'll help me keep track of it make sure I don't lose it not really necessary you could set it aside if you want but that frees up the kick down transmission linkage and we can just move it off to toward the passenger side along with the electrical connectors just need to make sure we don't damage it in the process okay so now the remaining piece of linkage is the main shifter linkage right now I have the transmission in park and I'm going to leave it in that position to remove this there is a one half inch or 13 millimeter bolt that connects it. You feel it's bolt on one side and it is a square on the other side. So let me give you a closer view of that. Square piece of metal on one side and on the other side right here is the 13 millimeter or one half inch bolt. So we need to unscrew that and then this whole unit pushes up. This is the selector that connects to the um, handle in the middle of the car that allows you to put it into park or drive, first or second or overdrive. And then we'll also have to remove a small bolt down here, I can show you in a minute, and another bolt up here to have the transmission linkage completely removed. We'll get to those in a minute. First, we're going to disconnect this one. All right, so here we are again. About ready to take off the linkage. And you may need a longer extension or a shorter extension, depending on which way you come at it from. As always, lefty is loosey. It may take some considerable force to move for what you're expecting. Either way, just little by little loosen it. Alright, once it's loose, I'll give it a little wiggle. If it seems like it wants to come off, move it up towards the sky. And back and forth until it comes off of the valve body. And you can see it has a flat spot in it. It's sort of a D-shaped piece of metal. Okay, so this can hang off to the side for a moment. Now, come over here, and there's a small bolt there, and a larger bolt right there. That larger bolt, we might have to put a wrench on the other side to get it off. Okay, we're on the bracket that connects the linkage to the front of the transmission, and it looks like you need to use a 3 8 that is a six point socket to remove this bottom bolt. Tried to use a 12 point, but the 12 point slipped. So it looks like 3 eighths and the six point is working better. Shouldn't be super tight. Should just hold it in place. Just make sure you don't lose it. Now we got to get up in here, take this second bolt off. This one is round on the top, so it doesn't look like it's going to take another wrench to hold it in place. 
All right, so we're going to remove that second bolt up there in the bracket that holds the linkage to the transmission. And we've got an 11 16 deep socket fits up in there. And it shouldn't take a lot of force. Okay, so we need to remove this bolt up here that holds the linkage in place. I want to get an 11 16 deep socket, pick it up in there, and then loosen that bolt. Might take a lot of force at first. Careful not to whack your hand into the exhaust like I just did. And we just want to take the nut all the way off of that bolt. It's attached to the bracket. Okay, and once you get the nut off of there, the linkage and the bracket should be able to push up and out of the way. You kind of need to wiggle it around until you find the angle that it will actually come out at. It often is not the easiest thing to do. Just gotta be patient and keep trying different angles until you find the angle it will come apart at. Sometimes you need to move the whole piece of linkage toward the rear of the vehicle to give yourself a little more slack. It may also be easier to do once you have pulled the transmission down some. It just depends. It's basically just one angle that it will come out at. But it is helpful to remove it before we take the bell housing bolts out. Just keep working it up until you find the angle that lets you get it out. See, I've even got a little notch in mind from having done this before. If you can't remove it with the transmission all the way up, you may actually have to wait until you've dropped the cross member to be able to get it out of there. It depends on how patient you are. It's usually much easier to get back in than it is to remove. Either way, be careful not to damage the linkage. You just want it up and off the transmission, the little ear that holds it in place. I might actually end up waiting until I've pulled the transmission down farther. But now it's removed. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the starter motor. And um, because I know I'm gonna to need to tie it out of the way and I don't wanna deal with the electrical connections, I'm just gonna take a piece of tie line right now before I begin and wrap it around the upper control arm. So now I have something to tie it off with. You could use a zip tie if you want. I like tie line because it's just easy to work with and it's reusable. All right, so there are two bolts. There's one that comes in from the rear, goes into the starter. You can use either a 5.8 socket or a 16 millimeter. And just reach up in there and make sure you're loosening the bolt, not tightening it. And just gradually take that top bolt out. I thought it would be a 15 millimeter, but I couldn't get that one on there. The 16 seems a little bit loose, so it may actually be a 9 16 also. We'll see about that. This front bolt is a 9 16 bolt. Just make sure whatever you're using isn't chewing it up and that it's getting some movement, and that should be all that needs to happen. And of course, I've disconnected the negative battery terminal at the beginning of all this. If you haven't done that, you want to make sure that it's disconnected right now before you make the starter make contact with anything in the vehicle. 
We don't have a lot of room to work between the body and the vehicle right here. Again, this is something you could do after dropping the cross member. I tend to try and get as many things out of my way before I have to work around the transmission jack holding the trans up. It's just a matter of personal preference. You could probably get in here with an air ratchet. You have enough room. If you wanted to take an air ratchet to this, just be careful not to push the air ratchet up against the body and get it trapped. Just watch your clearance and stop before it hits the body. I've chosen to do this by hand this time. Either way will work gotta be patient. And you can see I'm holding my wrench in place with my right thumb just to make sure that I'm not chewing up the bolt head that it doesn't slip off on me every time. After a certain point, you should be able to unscrew it by hand. Okay, so there's my bolt removed from the back part. It goes through the bell housing and into the transmission. I'm sorry, through the bell housing and into the starter mover. So now I'm going to switch over to my 9 16th socket and start removing the bolt on the front. a lot more clearance to do the front bolt and you can see that the starter starts to come loose almost immediately. Definitely don't want to get these two bolts mixed up when you go to put them back in. I think they might actually be slightly different sizes for a reason to help you not get them mixed up. But in any case, you want to go ahead once you've got it loose enough hold the starter with one hand and take the bolt out the rest of the way. All right, so now without letting it hang from the wire, I want to take the piece of tie line that I have ready, and go around the starter, tie it into place we don't want all that weight hanging on the wire on the connector. Definitely not ideal for it. I'll try to go around the fattest part I can. And just tie it off so it's out of the way. And that should be out of the way so that we can remove this inspection plate next. Next we are going to remove the transmission inspection plate and I've got a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench. There are three bolts that hold it in place. You can see two of them right now. And I'm using a magnetic tray so I can keep track of them. one of them. And the second one is here. Just not to smash yourself. It's very easy to do. And the second bolt's right there. Now the third one is over here in the top corner. See it? It's right there. And we're just going to get up in there. 
up here. You could, of course, use the socket if you wanted to. This is a 97, and this is a 42RE, and it's mated to 4.0 liter straight six, as I said before. So, only three bolts on this inspection housing plate. On some versions of the Jeep, earlier versions, there may be more like five of these bolts in addition to the ones for the starter. And then the starter has a stud bolt, which needs to be removed from the transmission bell housing. All right, so all three of those are removed. We just want to gently wiggle the whole thing down. Comes into two pieces. This is the driver's side piece. In this case, the passenger one looks a little bit stuck. Okay, so like I said before, the passenger side of my inspection plate has gotten stuck. So I'm going to take some channel locks and put some force down on it and see if I can break it loose. It's really on there good. I don't necessarily need to remove it to get my torque converter bolts out in this case. I can still see the torque converter bolt here and I can turn the engine over to get to it. So we could leave this part on until later if it really is trapped and it may not be any issue. Um, we can deal with it later on. It doesn't appear to still be connected to the transmission. There is a transmission housing bolt above it on either side. These two bolts, one over here and one over there, they need to be removed possibly before it'll come out. So I'm not going to push on it too hard. It doesn't seem to want to come out. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Now that we have the inspection plate removed, our next move is going to be to take the torque converter bolts out. To do that on the 4.0, we're going to need a three-quarter socket that we can put on the main drive pulley. And then we're going to need a 14 millimeter socket that we can use to take the bolts out of the torque converter. Okay, so here we are underneath the vehicle and you can see the bottom of the serpentine drive belt here and the pulley that attaches to the crank. I'm using an angled ratchet so that I can get up in there and put a socket on the three quarter inch bolt that's in the middle of it. Now you want to only turn the engine clockwise so that from my point of view is moving the handle to my right as I look at it. And we're going to come back to this spot to move the engine whenever we need to to get the torque converter bolts out. Okay, so here we are at bell housing at the front of the transmission. And you can see that 14 millimeter bolt right there that holds the flex plate to the torque converter. There are four of those bolts and we're going to take each of them out. But first we're going to mark the torque converter with some paint. In case we need to reinstall the same torque converter, we can be sure to get it lined up exactly in the same configuration. So you can see there's a little hole behind it. That hole sees through to where the torque converter is. I'm just going to hit it with some paint really quick. And that way I'll know if I'm going to reinstall it, how to line it back up. And there's my torque converter marked to line up with the flex plate. Since this first bolt is in a place where I can get to it, I'm just going to go ahead and take my 14 millimeter wrench and unscrew it. These bolts usually have Loctite, so it's a really good idea to put a lot of pressure on it and use both hands and make sure that you gently remove it. Okay, so you can see the bolt there, especially now that I've painted it. 
And we're just gonna reach up in there. And remove this bolt. The torque converter and flex feet might move a little bit, hopefully not too much. You don't want them to rotate, you want the bolt to come out. I would not use an air ratchet to do this. I'd stick with hand tools. Definitely don't want to cross thread it or damage the bolt. It's normally under quite a bit of pressure. That's the bolt removed. You can see it still has some Loctite on it. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the front of the engine bay, over where we have the other wrench still. And we're going to rotate the engine clockwise while looking back in the place where the torque converter connected until we get the next bolt in exactly that same spot. So then you can see the bolt is in the same spot. again get at it from the same angle we're just going to take our wrench and take that bolt out if you didn't move it far enough go back to the front of the engine move it a little bit farther until you get it in the ideal location to get it out nothing in your way Sometimes you might have to go back and forth a little bit. Just make sure you're not chewing up the bolt. Okay, so there's our second torque converter bolt. Now again, I'm going to go back to the front of the engine. And keep an eye on that spot and move to our third torque converter bolt. Okay, again, we should be able to see it right there. I got the right angle. I can take this torque converter bolt out here. Yeah, it moves a little every time you try to break it. It's good to take the other wrench and move the engine back down a little. You're not hitting the cooler lines. All right, now that we've removed the third torque converter bolt, we just need to move the engine one more time to get the fourth one where we can access it. All right, so once you get it in a spot, right, you can get at it with the other wrench. Just 
pretty much the same spot I had it before. Let's go ahead and take that last bolt out. And we will have disconnected the flex plate from the torque converter. Make sure not to lose these bolts. They are very particular in size. Alright, so there's our last torque converter bolt. I'm just put those aside. I'm going to stick them in my magnetic pan. That's it for that step. Okay, now that we've got the torque converter disconnected, our next move is going to be to disconnect the cooler lines. So I'm going to use a little bit of penetrating oil to help make sure that things come apart. On this version of the 42RE transmission, the front connector just unscrews, and it looks like the back connector can either unscrew or pull apart. There are no little metal clips like on the earlier versions of this transmission. So just be careful not to break anything, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so we're here on the driver's side of the transmission. You can see the two cooler lines right there. And they connect to the transmission here. And the other one connects to the transmission right up here. So I'm going to hit both of these with a little bit of penetrating oil to help them come apart. Give that a minute to soak in. Okay, so we're going to pull this connector for the transmission cooler line out. And we just need to compress it a little bit. And then hopefully we can wiggle it out with our hand. Sometimes as these things get older, the plastic gets really brittle. And we want to be careful not to break it. But there are some instances where you need to replace it. it. Might help to unclip the cooler line from the other one over here. They're clipped together with this little S piece of metal. So we need to get some clearance on it. And just wiggle it out gently. If it won't come out, we're going to have to unscrew the entire fitting, which I don't want to do. So you can see I've already got it to move some. Just keep pulling back on it and wiggling it. And making sure that this clip is compressed. And if the clip, the clip ends up breaking, you may just have to replace it. So these aren't very rusted, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I can get it out of there. Sometimes when these cooler lines are really rusted, you need to replace them entirely. Looks like I may have broken both sides of it at this point. It's pretty old. Not having a lot of luck getting it out of there anyway. So I may need to get something I can put behind the two halves of the plastic piece. Let's see about that. Definitely stuck. Okay, I'm going to try to slip a piece of a metal zip tie behind the clip. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Sometimes the hardest part of one of these is just getting it to the point where it's not locked in anymore. Like I said, over time the plastic becomes brittle and the whole thing doesn't want to move. It may still be being locked in on the side. Alright, and there it's out. 